The brain is composed of about 1 trillion neurons. Each neuron consists of a soma, dendrites, and an axon. The neurons communicate with each other via connections called synapses. The neuron accumulates its incoming signals from connecting neurons through its dendrites. If the neuronal threshold is crossed, a spike is generated and transmitted to the next connecting neurons via the axon. Here, we demonstrate that century-old assumptions are overturned by new types of experiments. The first experimental observation indicates different spike waveforms for each dendrite. Experiments are performed on neuronal cultures, where connections between neurons are excluded and dendrites are stimulated via extracellular electrodes. Each dendrite has its own threshold. The neuron generates a different spike waveform for each dendrite when its threshold is crossed. We see here experimentally recorded different spike waveforms from each dendrite. The second experimental observation indicates that a neuron functions as multiple threshold units. A spike is not generated when two dendrites are weakly stimulated simultaneously. However, if the two stimulations were given to the same dendrite, an evoked spike would be generated. Hence, a spatial summation is absent between different dendrites. The third experimental observation indicates that each dendrite has a different maximal transmission rate. When the red dendrite is stimulated at 10 Hz, the neuron fires at 6 Hz, whereas when the blue dendrite is stimulated at 10 Hz, the neuron fires at 3 Hz only. Hence, each dendrite has a different maximal transmission rate. The fourth experimental observation indicates that each dendrite has a different absolute refractory period. After a neuron generates a spike, it cannot generate another spike for about 2 milliseconds. This silencing period is called the absolute refractory period. Then, the neuron enters a relative refractory period, with stuttering activity, until full responsiveness is achieved. Recent experiments indicate that each dendrite has a different absolute refractory period, which can exceed 20 milliseconds. After this period, the neuron returns to full activity, without an intermediate phase of relative refractory period. The new findings reveal that the absolute refractory periods can be 10 times longer than was previously assumed, where each dendrite has a different refractory period. The new neuron is found to be a very precise element, with a sharp transition from the refractory period to full responsiveness, without an intermediate stutter phase. We turn now to the paradox of synaptic learning. Synaptic learning is based on backpropagating signal from the soma to the dendrite after an evoked spike. This slow adaptation mechanism results in strengthening or weakening of the synapse. To understand the paradox of synaptic learning, let us look at the neuronal scale. If a neuron is represented by a person's body, then a synapse is represented by his fingers, and the length of his arms would be as tall as a skyscraper. The first paradox is that learning occurs far away from the soma, as if the disk and the CPU in a computer were very distant. The second paradox is that learning is slow and noisy and can take up to hours. The third paradox is that learning is sensitive to stimulation timings and different conducting features. The new type of experiments indicates dendritic learning as a paradigm shift in brain learning. The blue dendrite is stimulated and generates an evoked spike. This is followed by stimulation of the red dendrite, which does not evoke a spike. This procedure causes a strengthening of the red dendrite, making it now easier to generate a spike. The first experimental observation 
is that learning occurs in closer proximity to the soma. Dendritic learning represents a global learning and is equivalent to the strengthening or weakening of all incoming synapses to the dendrite. Second, the learning is much faster and takes several seconds only. Third, dendritic learning can occur in different branches of the dendritic tree. Note that while in dendritic computation dendritic strengths are fixed, in dendritic learning, the strengths are changing dynamically. In dendritic learning, the dendrite functions as a nonlinear amplifier. The outcome of two signals is their amplified signal. And in addition, the product of the two amplified signals. This is the source for the emergence of input crosses. We now step up from learning on biological dendritic trees to learning on an artificial tree network. Here, a single neuron implements a multi-layer network, including input crosses. In artificial neural networks, the number of roots between an output unit and a weight is large. These enormous calculations are performed using fast and parallel GPUs. This difficulty is solved on a tree architecture, since there is only one root from the output to each weight. Application of dendritic learning was examined for handwritten digits recognition. It has shown to achieve success rates approaching unity, indicating realization of deep learning, even by a single neuron. Existing deep learning algorithms differ from dendritic learning in updating weights and in input crosses. Artificial accelerated brain dynamics to gigahertz will boost AI capabilities where the sky is the limit.